Now let's look at the foundations of the Illuminati. And I'm going to begin with this chart. Um, uh, it's based on what I believe, Lucifer and Satan. These are not all the same. There are different charts out there, so you can mix and match if you want to. But to me, these are the, the most accurate ones. Um, but there is something that I want you to be aware of at the end of this presentation, really, uh, it, that is the climax and the gist of the entire presentation. So please bear with this uh, entire uh, presentation to the end. Uh, understanding now Satan and Lucifer at the top helm. This chart says that the papal bloodlines, the papal bloodlines are the Roman Empire bloodlines. Uh, we have a black nobility council, uh, and this is Jesuitiz Jesuitism, the Jesuit council, and the Jesuit order. Moving on to Zionism and the Rothschilds. Zionism is the establishment or the political establishment of the state of Israel. And yeah, there is a truth movement side on the, the occult side that is against this type of Zionism. And I can show you that. And then we have aristocracy and knighthoods. Um, moving on to secret services. So you can see the structure. Here's the Illuminati Brotherhood, CFR, and the Freemasonic structure. Uh, we put Ignatius Loyola at the top here because he is the Jesuit general. He is somewhere in this area. Uh, he is representing these bloodlines. And then we have the Rothschilds and Zionism. You see Mayor Amschel Rothschild. His uh, sons, we'll see that a little bit later, who are uh, in charge of the Vatican's money uh, hoard. And that is the Swiss banking system. W their system now is the economy that we run on globally. This is Adam Weishaupt. He was a Jesuit priest. And he is uh, attributed to founding the Illuminati uh, itself and the Illuminati itself is really this entire structure uh, all the way up to the top level. Give me a control of a nation's money. I care not who makes her laws. And this is Ma uh, Mayor Rothschild. Uh, and so uh, governments are run by money. As Satanists, we were told that the Illuminati were very powerful satanic spiritual beings, which is not entirely false because the Illuminati is possessed by these beings. Now. Uh, Stephen Dolans, you can look him up and uh, what he believes, but uh, uh, I understand that to be true, meaning that possession is really the gist of it. <clears throat> the majority of, this is Manly P. Hall, the majority of modern me mediumistic apparitions are but elemental creatures. His word for demons. Masquerading through bodies, i.e. possession, composed of thought substance, uh, us, supplied by the very persons desiring to be hold. Okay, so these, uh, not, not thought substance, us, but these bodies, demonic demons, uh, that they are thought substance and supplied by the very persons desiring to be hold these rays of decarnate beings. Meaning, they're not incarnate, they are decarnate, and people give them up to possession and this is key to understanding this and you saw in the previous part of uh, part one demonic possession these people do this and it's like a drug they want that power and uh, they uh, give the spirits and the demons free reign of their body oh gosh look at this chart now this is uh, Jack Chick um, my uh, my mother gave this to me a long time ago. I didn't realize uh, what it really was. Uh, here is the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits, the Illuminati, CFR, um, the international bankers, the Mafia, which is the Hood Mafia, Club of Rome, Opus Dei, the Masons, New Age Movement. Let me read this. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence. She is great. A greater possessor of material riches than any other single institution, corporation, bank, giant trust, government, or state of the whole globe. The Pope, as the visible ruler of this immense uh, amassment of wealth, is consequently the richest individual in the 20th century. No one can realistically assess how much he is worth in terms of billions of dollars. Okay, now, this is early on back in the 80s, and I believe that this white Pope that you see here is actually subservient to the Black Pope, which are the Jesuit generals. And the Jesuit council here, you see, are actually now um, supporting these bloodlines uh, dating all the way back to the Roman Empire, and I believe all the way back to Babylon. So the elite have always been the elite um, in this 
sense. Now let's move on to this chart. I believe it is an accurate chart from what I see and what I've studied. Rome being at the helm currently, <clears throat> there is, they have their fingers in everything. Uh, here's the Knights of Columbus, Secret Societies, Rosicutions, Jesuits. And you see Jesuits, you see here Yakuza, which is a uh, uh, the Japanese uh, mafia. And then you see Illuminati, Skull and Bone Society, Bilderberg Group. Yeah, sounds kind of, you know, far-fetched, huh? Uh, well, Knights of Malta and the CIA. And I'll show you that connection uh, with one particular individual there, more than one individual. Um, you see Knights Templar. You see here very clearly Rosicrucians, Knights Templar, Masons, Masonry, Freemasonry to Theosophists, Theosophy to Lucis Trust, and Theosophy to the New Age Movement through Freemasonry, Lucis Trust, United Nations. So you can see the accuracy that I just showed you of this chart. Um, and of course, look, the Nazi Party, European Union, oh, there's a lot going on, and they are all interconnected. So I just want you to be aware of that. Moving on, here is Ignatius Loyola. You see the Jesuit logo, IHS. There he is. Look how they like to put halos on each other as well. Wow, what an organization. Global Jesuit uh, assistancies, they are global. Actually, Maryland, the state of Maryland in the United States, was named uh, Maryland, Virgin Maryland, uh, by Catholicism. And so you see who they are, all dressed in black for your consumption. Now, Blavatsky, and I don't like to quote from her, but uh, the, you can take some truths out of it and just uh, uh, divulge information. It, it is curious to note that that uh, to, uh, too, that most of the bodies which work these, such as the ancient accepted Scottish Rite, the Rite of Avignon, the Order of the Temple, Fessler's Rite, and Grand Council of the Emperors uh, of the East and West, Sovereign Prince, Masons, etc., etc., are nearly all offsprings of the sons of Ignatius Loyola, the Baron Hunt, Chevalier, Ramsey, Shooty, uh, Zen, all these family blood lines um, and the grades of these rites worked under instructions from the general of the Jesuits. Um, just to show you, and of course she's part of it and she admires this rather than uh, does not admire this. So this is just showing you bloodlines. Now looking at the supposed birthday of the Illuminati, at least the Colombian faction it is said that uh, its birthday is May 1st, 1776. That's why you actually have the 1776 on the bottom of the pyramid um, when it is also the birth date of the nation. Uh, but May 1st is a satanic holiday. It is called May Day or Beltane's Day and that's usually when they do the Maypole um, uh, pagan dance around. Uh, we look at Rihanna here uh, in pop culture now and she has Adam Weissop's image on her arm. And within a video, she's called the Princess of the Illuminati. So they are externalizing this idea of the Illuminati. They're not caring anymore. Um, it really is in your face. And so uh, if we go one more generation, we're really not going to care anything about this. The new generation will because they'll be completely programmed into the, uh, because of the media. Uh, and entertainment uh, doing this type of thing. We have, looking at the Rothschild dynasty, these are the five brothers of Mayor Amschel Rothschild who went out and established uh, central banking using uh, the uh, uh, Vatican horde. So they are, are essentially lieutenants of this Vatican horde given charge of uh, establishing economies this way and this is what we see globally now taken over the world the establishment of this current fractional reserve banking economy and so you can see here is the Rothschild emblem within that emblem there is a six-pointed star up above uh, as well this is attributed to uh, the fact that the Vatican and the Nazis were working together and hoarding money through the Swiss banking system. That Swiss banking system is completely private, um, so there is no transparency at all. United Bank of Scotland 
uh, you can see here uh, they use the papal keys uh, so does the United Bank of Scotland I'm not saying that it is but they are connected uh, that way the Swiss banks are the Vatican banks um, and also you can see the checkerboard floor this is an ominous image um, that were, they actually created a Vatican bank so uh, they're out in the open with uh, a, an actual bank itself. So here we have a, an, a religious institution involved in that which uh, they shouldn't be involved with, banking. Um, are you going to serve God or mammon? Mammon meaning money. And God is uh, 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 against this. So uh, looking at the creature from Jekyll Island, this is the story of the Federal Reserve. Um, and it was a story of them going to an island and planning the establishment of the Federal Reserve Act 1913 that was passed and these are the men involved with that and the prominent name here is John D Rockefeller you have JP Morgan Schiff and the Warburgs and there are other families involved with this looking at this um, tells it all this is a pyramid scheme it is a Ponzi scheme and it is printing money out of thin air that what is what fractional reserve banking means. You take a fraction of what you have and you loan out 90 uh, plus percent of what you don't have. And so that is printed out and simply these days uh, done with uh, computers uh, and numbers. So uh, they use terms like quantitative uh, easing. Uh, that's uh, the latest term they used uh, in pumping money into the economy. A quantitative easing, how uh, easily decipherable that is to say that all they're doing is quantity, <laughs> easing the economy by um, pumping money into it. And this is can be further from the truth. Here is the establishment of central banking. If the people actually knew how simple it is to understand that the entire econ world's economy is debt-based, we're not buying debt at all because we can never pay back any debt. There is no interest at all in this system. Uh, uh, there is interest tacked on to debt, but it's simply debt-based, and that is all. So it's fiat currency. It's monopoly money. And so if you own the system of monopoly money, then you own the world. And this is exactly what they do. They own the world. And so you can see the example of the amount of debt in the world and what countries have the most debt are the countries that are the richest countries. It's just as simple as that. If we knew it, we would be up in arms that way. Uh, but of course, in, in my belief system, I'm not up in arms. I'm comfortable knowing that the world is going down and that there is a plan for all of this, a spiritual plan. We are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, conspiring conspiring with others around the globe to build a more integrated global political and economic structure one world uh, David Rockefeller in his book memoirs so this is the Federal Reserve World Bank IMF Bilderberg CFR trilateral lateral commission NAFTA World Trade organizations all of these organizations are owned and operated and we're meant to believe that they're all independent things um, and everybody's fighting for it they own everything now, one thing I did want to say is that if you're going to believe that your politicians in this nation, uh, this is the United States, believe uh, that are, are ignorant to how the economy works and that it's fiat currency, fiat based, um, I'm sorry, but I believe that you're being completely naive. These people know what they're doing. They know how the economy works. They know it's a central bank. They know it's fiat currency, and they simply just act their way into you believing oh we have a national debt we have to pay off our debt it is all slave based they are all playing the game they understand it they go back into uh, the back rooms they rehearse their speech for the masses and I'm telling you if it's in entertainment it's in politics please don't be naive to thinking that your politicians are telling you uh, how things work they know it's a Ponzi scheme they are in the ball game itself and on the other note you may have one lone wolf 
uh, crying out there, i.e., like a Ron Paul of a, of a third party or the pub Republican Party. And if you research Ron Paul, he's playing the game as well. His wife and his daughter are Freemasons. We can't confirm whether he's a Freemason or not, but when your wife and daughter are, um, it is very rare for you not to be. So understand that they, all of their people that even have a voice are playing the game or else they don't have a voice at all. They don't even make it on television. That is my understanding and my research, and please um, understand that and go seek that for yourself. Now, going on to the Club of Rome, if the present uh, uh, trends, I'm not going to read this, but basically they're saying that we're in trouble if we don't control all of these factors. Uh, pollution, production, uh, yes, I understand. So they're trying to solve the world's problems, and their solution is a 10-region system, bringing this whole Babylonian New World Order together. It is the Old World Order now encompassing the New World Order, which is, encompasses the entire planet. North American Union, uh, European Union, Union, you have Japan here in its own economic power, but you, ha you see all of these regions, and uh, the, there are biblical connotations to this in the book of Revelation as far as the number 10 um, with regard to these regions as well. So moving on, here is the Pope. You can see this ominous uh, sculpture behind. It looks like Lucifer to me, an angelic being in a type of whirlwind. European Union signing was done at the Vatican. Here's Tony Blair here, and you can see that large sculpture of one of the Pope. I think that's Pope Innocent. Moving along, look at the currency of the European Union. Uh, a Revelation 17, a woman riding the beast. And you can see that symbology. Now, woman riding the beast on currency. Magazine covers. A woman riding the beast. All of this having biblical uh, significance. And they do this on purpose. Here's an old picture of the Tower of Babel. Here's NATO headquarters. Uh, I believe that's NATO headquarters or, or EU par parliament, one or the other. And then you have also Occupy movement. If you really research the Occupy movement, the Occupy movement was a UN uh, uh, originated movement. And we are to think that this is all grassroots. But look at the imagery of the Occup Occupy movement of the woman riding the beast. And so look at also uh, the uh, this European uh, Union, Europe, Many tongues, one voice, and the significance of that is the Tower of Babel. Look at the shape of the stars. You remember that tarot card uh, pointing down? And then also look at this. These are blockheads. So you have conformed now to this world uh, and this system. Look at the baby has the round head. This is an insult to us. So the baby is round head, has not conformed, and all of everyone needs to conform to, to the system. This is what they want. Kind of interesting, they have pyramids in the background as mountains as well. Look at the uh, Tower of Babel symbology again at the EU par Parliament building and that unfinished type of tower structure. And my, me as an architect understand that this is the case. Now here is that tarot uh, card, tarot card, and look at the shape of that uh, the star in comparison. Moving along with the emblem of the 33rd degree and Ordo Ab Chao, Order Out of Chaos, uh, you have this, Sapientia, S-A-P-I-E-N-T-I-A, -E Sapientia, refers to the um, uh, constitution of the Vatican. You have the Solvent Cross, which is also a Vatican uh, creation called the Solvent Cross. So you have this reference to Rome. And again, you, I show uh, Napoleon with his Roman hand of power, sign of the benediction, and laurel leaf, and the Caesars wore the laurel leaf. What I'm going to tell you is that Rome has been continually putting on a face or a veil of Jesus you know, when, in fact, they're uh, completely pagan. Finishing up this plate, let's look at this final chart here. And so you have the uh, black popes. Uh, they are representing these bloodlines. And you have the uh, uh, Jesuit council, uh, black pope, white pope. 
This is the old uh, Black Pope, and this is the new Black Pope. And then uh, I've also heard that there is a Gray Pope who we don't see. But anyway, we move along, and you see now Knights of Malta. The, this is Knights of the Order of St. John and the Solvent Cross there. And then you have uh, them here. This is the Knights of Malta, and you see the Maltese Cross. You see this adornment with crown. You see that same adornment with crown on all of the degrees of the Scottish Rite. And this is the 33rd degree adornment. And you can see the similarity between the two adornments um, uh, in that Scottish Rite. You can see the adornment inside the lodge as well being that same type of adornment. They are one and the same. Rome is... Uh, Gnosticism is Knights Templar, is Freemasonry, and all the way through is Rosicrucianism. And you can see that same adornment. Now here's a double-headed eagle with the black and white dualism symbology, the eye of Lucifer, or the triangle emanating the Knights of Malta, or the Maltese cross. Now you see royalty being down on the list. They are actually owned by this Roman system. And they are allowed to reign, rule and reign their particular uh, countries in this colonial Roman system. And now you see presidents and dignitaries way down on the list. Freemasonry. Freemasonry is simply a church for these guys. And there are high-level people that own corporations and run corporations and are allowed to be wealthy uh, that run them. Knights of Columbus is the uh, Catholic version. What they like to do is separate themselves from the other organizations and then create another uh, sister organization like the Knights of Malta that are exclusively Catholic. And so uh, here are the Knights of Malta way down on the list. And you see them uh, in their pageantry sometimes. And these are uh, usually people they don't know exactly what they're, they're doing, but the higher levels up in the organization are the ones that know uh, what is going on.